Okay, in the last episode, we refactored our code and moved the logic for our get products endpoint and put it into its own class, a get products query handler. We're going to continue this pattern, and this time we're going to refactor this one, our get product. So in the query handlers folder, we're going to do file, new, Java class. This is going to be get capital, get product query handler. And we're going to do a similar thing that we did with the get all products. It's going to have a service annotation. It's going to implement our query, which we defined earlier. Here's our query interface. Implements query. Our input is going to be an integer. And our output is going to be a product. and import. And then we need to implement our methods. So just like the last query handler, we will need to inject our repository. So at auto wired private product repository product repository. And then coming back to our controller, we're going to cut this and paste it here. Our integer in this in this case was called input. I'm going to rename it to ID. And now we're getting an error because this is supposed to return an optional product. So in our previous implementation, we ended up just returning optional of type product, which is not the best way to handle this because what if it can't find the product that it's looking for? We did this earlier just to get up and running as quickly as possible, but now we're gonna wanna refactor this so it handles it a little bit better. So we're going to change this to just return a response entity with a product. We'll come back to this in a second. Okay, so let's refactor this to better account for the optionals. So we're going to do optional of type product, product equals product repository, dot find by ID and we pass in ID and import. If you're unfamiliar with optionals, they essentially work by saying, let's go to the repository. Let's try to find by ID. And if we find it, we can just return the product. But if there's nothing in there, if they can't find it, then you don't want it to throw a null pointer exception. You want it to be able to handle it more gracefully. So we're going to do if product is empty, then we're going to throw an exception, which we'll do in just a second. If it's not empty, we want to return response entity dot okay. And we're going to pass in the product but this is an optional. So in order to get the product itself, we do get. And of course we can delete our old return value. So now let's throw our exception. For right now, we're just gonna throw a generic exception so that it works. Later on in a different video, I'll explain how to throw custom exceptions. So for now, we're just going to do throw new runtime exception and we're going to pass in product not found.
So at this point, let's go back to our product controller and link it all up. So we're going to need auto wired private get product query handler get product query handler and then we're going to return get product query handler dot execute and we're going to pass in the ID and we are good to go let's run our application and check it in postman So in this case, we are expecting no change in behavior if it finds the ID, but if it can't find the ID, we are expecting a slightly different behavior. So first, let's do a get on ID of one, and we got our product. Let's try it on an ID that we do not have data for, 10. So we got an internal service error we did get a response, but if we go back to our console, we got product not found in our runtime exception. So the better way to handle this is we want to send back a response that says product not found, and we'll be able to do that uh, shortly. But for now, our endpoint is working, and we successfully moved our get product query handler into its own class so its logic can be independent of the controller. Okay.